Hello, and welcome aboard the vessel Shannon, a 42-foot sailboat. I wish I could tell you more about it, but I don't really know. It's got a very tall mast, and um, we are in the Shelter Island Marina, where my brother Michael and his fiance Jean have been living for the past year. And this is the Art, Science, Nature, Knit, Knit, emphasis on the Knit podcast. And I'm Natalie, also known as Cool Water Hot Sun. So, thanks for tuning in. I'm in San Diego, where a lot of my family lives, and um, we've actually made some knitting progress this week, um, believe it or not. But first, I want to let you know that this is a beautiful place. Um, we went tide pooling out in uh, the tip of Point Loma, which is like the southwestern tip of San Diego, and that was fun. And um, the marina is beautiful. We didn't catch any lobster last night. Um, Michael tried to, and all the boats here are awesome. They're mostly from San Diego. They're mostly sailboats, although there's definitely some yachts and boats that are under power. Uh, they have funny names, like the one behind me, ironically, is called Miss Michael. So funny. There's Esperanza, and there's Fidelitas, and there's Ohana from Hawaii. Trouble, of course, and things like uh, greener pastures, and pretty fun. So, um, yeah, uh, what do we have that's in no grand conclusions? There are no finished objects this week. Um, but I did make progress. So what's in the study phase is still, um, I cast on, I had cast on Zuzu's Petals by Karina Spencer. That. last week and um, it's coming along swimmingly I must say it's a very quick knit and I'm doing it on um, doing magic loop on US 7 um, what are these they're uh, not high high what's the other one sharks that everybody likes to use um forget. But I'm magic looping and I'm doing Malabrigo. This color on top is Malabrigo and the with the yellow and, and then the bottom is Manos de Uruguay and it is a lovely quick very quick knit about a sport or a worsted it's probably sport and um beautiful lace pattern 50 percent silk 50 percent merino on both yarns and um just loving it it's fast when it's blocked up you'll get to see it better but you can also check it out online it's so soft so lovely and the colors are just great. I, I think they're coming out a little bit um, yellow. I mean, this this is really like a really nice... There's pinks and greens and um, all sort of very uh, natural. But there's even purples and browns. And then we'll, we'll see. So this is kind of like going to be sort of a long neck part. And then this is going to be kind of a, it's a cowl, of course. Fun! So soft. I can't wait to wear it. I can't wait to leave sunny, warm San Diego. It's really nice. It's actually overcast, which it usually is in the morning, and then now it's starting to burn off like it normally does right here on the water. Inland, it's much hotter. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to go back to chilly Colorado where I can wear warm things. And that's in my Little chicken boot bag, clear wristlet, love it. It's working great. 
are those needles? Oh, I hope you guys can't hear that loud. You can hear the airplane. The airport's nearby. So, what else are we studying? We are studying fun stuff. Um, these are almost done. Do you remember these? Do you remember these gloves? For Becky? Oh yeah, there's a boat here called Rebecca. That's funny. Um, these are for Becky, and they're almost done. I got, I just had too much fun with the cowl. So I sorta dropped the ball on this one a little bit. These are going in the mail. They're already a week past birthday. So I hope to finish these on the way home. Uh oh, dropped a bunch of stitches. Woo! Crazy. That. Seagulls. Oh. This is sandy. Dang it. I hate loud power tools. I just hate them. So, um, yeah, I dropped a bunch of stitches. Better pick those up. Um, and I am, they're in my little travel pan. With the magnet on it, and uh, that's going okay. On the inside, I've got my um, I've got a big magnet, and it's got my darning needle on it, and that's really been handy. It's a little bulky. I'm not quite sure. The jury is still out on how well this versus the um, the uh, flat tray is working. But, um, they both have their merits and their drawbacks. I've also just been able to fold the page and look at it. So whether or not it's worth carrying something like this on a trip is, uh, still, the jury's still out. But, um, what else? Definitely still got a new working hypothesis in theory. So you remember I said trying to figure out what to make for the people who live in warm climates? Well, it turns out nobody ever wears socks around here ever. So forget socks. Socks are completely out of out of the question. But it turns out my mom it was interested in something kind of warm, so I showed her this uh, Cascade Heritage Silk, it's very, it's like a fingering, it's really thin, and, um, it's, uh, really soft, it's, uh, 75% superwash merino and, um, 25% silk, and it turns out she did want something a little bit warm, so we came up with the concept of doing a vest, and she, anyway, she, she decided she wanted a vest. And we looked and looked and looked on Ravelry together, and that was fun. And, um, this isn't going to look so great, but she came up with this Drops design, which is a Norwegian company. It's got a lot of patterns for this vest. And it's got some really nice, uh, I guess you'd say sort of lace work, cable work on the back, which you don't have to go look at it online. I'll link to it, but, um, and then this nice ribbon down the front, and it's kind of an open thing, and she's a little heavier, so it can, it'll just really drape um, on her. But the uh, gauge for this, so this is going to be a fun and grand experiment. The gauge on this is uh, for definitely, um, like, two strands, alpaca and kid silk. And so their gauge is 17 stitches per four inches, and with this, I gauged it up. It's really nice. It is making a really nice fabric. It is really stretchy, really nice. I really like it, and it's really soft, but it's 17 stitches per two inches, which is great. I am going to try to double the stitches 
And so for some of the lace work, I haven't figured I'm going to keep swatching and do some of the lace work and decide whether or not I want to, um, you know, if it calls for something like a um, knit and pass one over, then uh, I haven't decided whether I want to do that, you know, in a collection of four stitches or if I just want to do it twice with a collection of two stitches each. So I'll get back to you on that, but that is definitely a definitely in the study phase. It may turn into a grand experiment. I'm not sure yet, but it might just be a simple, straightforward thing once I get the, once I swatch up some lace and see how that works with double stitches. So if anybody's ever done that, let me know. Um, it's a new one on me. So um, kind of all I have for works in progress and um, but it's been fun. I just have a couple more fun things to show you. Um, they're sort of like, uh, I don't know, connections to the past. Cause, so I've been here visiting my mom and her sister and my aunt who was here from Quebec City. And it's great. My aunt now fell in love with the gloves. She loved her socks, by the way, those um, uh, light blue. Thank God it's sock day by... Quebecois designer Rosie Ver. She loved them. Um, they were light blue and they were um, bamboo and merino and silk. She loved them. And um, she loved the gloves so much that now I am actually going to make another pair of those gloves someday um, out of, oh, and I'm excited because we decided to make them out of Blue Sky Alpaca. 50% alpaca and 50% silk, and it's the fine, fine fingering gauge, just like these other ones. Um, I can't wait. They're going to be so soft. I actually have a couple, for several skeins of dark brown of that blue sky alpacas for myself to make gloves. So it's going to be a very glovey, glove, lovey, lovey glove winter. And uh, hopefully they'll all fit like a glove. So anyway, I was visiting family. And part of the reason I was waiting also to get my, decide what um, interchangeable needle set I wanted was that I, what I here visiting and my mom was going to give me all of my grandma's old knitting needles. And so I wanted to see what was there. And I didn't actually expect there to be, you know, a whole lot of circular needles, but, um, <laughs> There were a few. I got a lot of straight needles, which is great because I don't have any. Now I have an, like this entire set of straight needles, and they're really colorful. And um, so that's super fun. Mostly I get like ones, threes, fives, eights, nines, fours, sevens. So now I have a good assortment of these. Who knows? Maybe I'll even do that sweater for my mom on on uh on these because it's knitted in panels back front sleeves i i swatched that up with my collage squares size four and um so i don't know i might have to re-swatch if i'm going to use these but yeah i pretty much have figured out that i'm a really tight knitter and that also maybe the square needles come up with a smaller gauge that's what i'm thinking but anyway these are fun i got some push crochet hooks and check these out though the circular knitting needles are so much fun check this out this has got to be from 1960 or something isn't that funny oh my god there's another one um they're plastic I am almost 100% sure these are going to glow in the dark. <laughs> I mean, you think? Look at them. They're, they're plastic. They, they're, they totally look like a glow stick to me. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what these are. Maybe these are tens or something. But, um, Susan Bates! Showing us how it's done from way back. Since 1873. That's what made in U.S. Chester, Connecticut. C.J. Bates and Son. Susan Bates, I, for seamless knitting garments, this is a um, 250, size 4, 29 inch 
nylon circular needle and it says virtually indestructible on there thank god because i'm constantly perfect fall points if needle curls soak in hot water oh my god <laughs> i'm gonna make something on here well these are size four maybe i'll make my mom's sweater on these just for fun <laughs> They're smooth. There's no, there is no seam or anything on them. So that'd be fun. It was fun to get some old stuff. And then here's some uh, double points, which I just love. I, I got a bunch of double points from somewhere else. Um, some random bag of needles that I got from somewhere else. And they were colorful like this. These are green. I love these. And these are orange. Those were size ones. And these are size threes. So much fun. Easy knit. Seven inch long, 65 cents for a set of four needles. Did you see this chick dancing? Look at this little girl. That's so funny. Oh my god. Anyway, made in the USA. So I just have that and then and then I got um my grandma didn't she knitted and I actually got the pattern that she um would always use to make us these funny little slippers. It was they were basically squares on the diagonal knitted together into a slipper and she'd put a pom pom. So <laughs> maybe I'll make a pair of those. But basically she did a lot of crocheting and I just wanted to show some of her she did a lot of these doilies and my mom gave me some of these which I was really glad to have. But like really nice. one of them and there's another one similar pattern i mean she had like 12 of them and i just got maybe three of them kind of fun there's one with some Ooh, i have to show you the center of this one Let's see can you see that so not exactly my style but pretty cool just the same my grandma made them i love them and i think I just have one more thing to show. My grand, my mom, big sewer. She taught me a lot about sewing and knitting. Well, not about knitting, but she taught me to sew. And I really appreciate that. I was little, I was like 10, 12. And I, I used to come home from school just wanting to sew. I loved it. And I don't sew as much, but um, this is really precious to me because my grandfather, this is a little, my mom's, my mom's, um, red caddy and so my grandfather uh who was a machinist and a, and a kind of super handyman he would he could make anything he made chairs he made bicycles i think he built an airplane he um he made this little caddy out of plastic and and attached all these little knobs from god only knows what what these original metal pieces were for but he improvised and um, made this perfect little thing because she just had everything loose in the tin. So she gave me that. I think that's the coolest thing. My grandfather, the, the fellas in my family and the gals are all very, um, they're, kind of, they're super inventive, I would say. So I think that might be it. I know I'm probably forgetting something. Um, that's it. Oh yeah, I remember. Okay, so my aunt and my mom didn't want to come and get recorded. I asked them if they wanted to, but um, because they're so influential in my life, I wanted to interview them. <laughs> and they didn't mind being interviewed. They just We just didn't end up filming it. But the question that I... So my mom taught me to sew, and she was always doing crafts. She did ceramics. She did, um, you name it. She did it. Flower arrangements, rug hooking, knitting, and um, so there was always crafts around. Definitely turned me. I mean, I always had something to do. Always materials available. 
And my aunt was a professional opera singer, so she was artsy in a different way. And she's always impressed with us and our handicrafts, and we're always impressed with her, her performing abilities. And so I asked each of them, um, you know, what, why is art important in your life and in general? And they, they both independently came up with a very similar answer, even though their crafts are completely different. And I agreed. I have the same answer is um they both said that it's like meditation that it's an absolute need that like when my aunt's on stage she just goes into this place where nothing else matters and nothing else exists and my mom said the same thing she said when she sits down and she's working that she just has a peace and um an absolute um relaxation and and that it's an absolutely necessary part of life. That without it, that um, she wouldn't be able to function. You know, she wouldn't have a go-to um, peace of mind. And I have to say the same thing. I I want for nothing when I'm knitting, and I want for nothing when I'm doing art and being creative and um, engaging in craft. And for me, I feel connected to the past and the future, and um, it's awesome. We all, I just thought it was really cool that we all agreed that um, art is, is an essential part of, of the brain and the nourishment and relaxation of the brain and of, of, of peace of mind. So I'm super curious. Why is art important to you? Let me know. Yet another completely unsolicited piece of opinion from Jean, one of the co-captains of the boat. And I asked her, why is art important? She's a beater. She does beading. Took her three days to organize. Beads. Beads. Lots of them. There's lots of beads. And I didn't even ask her the question. What did she say? It's very grounding. What's the question? Feels good. What makes you do art? Ah! to do art you know I mean I don't know I don't know but it feels good it's like it's like uh, it's grounding and you can't do anything else but do that yeah and it might have some mindless television on in addition to that <laughs> but that doesn't really count no but that's part of the whole wavelength that's part of the alpha waves beta right. waves etc right but what I really want to know is artists what... unite yay hope you're having a great time out there enjoying the wild places and the knitting and crafting that you're doing. So thanks for joining me in San Diego. See you next time. Bye.